everyone, welcome to Baozi Training Lead Code Solution. If you want the best mock interview experience in North America, feel free to check us out at baozitraining.org. If you have any questions, feel free to leave comments uh, in below on this video or comment on our blog. So we do provide a mock interview service. Here's the uh, different packages, $1.99 for for uh, a one hour interview plus 30 minutes debrief and a 599, which contains three rounds of interview, resume revision, and all the debriefs. Okay, so today we're going to talk about the problem, which is uh, the code 173 binary search tree iterator. The problem is giving you a binary search tree, always pay attention whether it's a binary tree or binary search tree, uh, implement, implement two interfaces of the iterator. One is next, the other is has next. So, but uh, a requirement of this is has to next returns the first the smallest element and then basically it should be a ascending order. Um, but, uh, yeah, next will return the next smallest element. So in this case, it's a binary search tree looks like this, you know, you call next, next, you, you call has next, which means whether they has the node or not. Um, the requirement of this is the next and has next method should run in O1, average O1 time, and the maximal memory we need to use is O in H, H in terms of the height of the tree, which is equivalent to log N for a binary tree in general. Um, and uh, for the test case, we may assume the next will always be valid. I will mention it later uh, because if you check the Java iterator interface, right, so it's also the uh, caller's responsibility to actually implement uh, the next correctly, which means you have to always check whether it has a next element uh, has next element before you call next, or else a uh, no such element exception will be thrown. So it makes our life easier. We don't need to do this check. Okay, here's the thought process, right? Whenever we we deal with BST with this kind of order things, uh, very very naturally at this moment you can you should think about you know there's a different ways to traverse a tree, right? So there is a basically, you know, in-order traversal, pre-order traversal, post-order traversal. And because this thing is in-order from smallest element to the largest element, the in-order traversal should be first thing appear in our mind. So a very naive brute force solution, what we can do is we just allocate an array or an array list. And then we just like, like normally when we do recursion, right, we just do a in-order traversal, which means we do the left first and then middle and then right. So essentially we dump this tree into a array like this. So that takes O N time. And then whenever you call next, you have a pointer, right? So this is the index pointer. You just keep moving this index. And then whenever it has next, you just check whether this index reached to the end of the array or not. So with this method, of course, uh, the next method and also the um, has next method is definitely O one time time complexity. However, remember there will be O N whenever you initialize this thing it is basically in your constructor because you have to flatten this tree into an array. So that takes O N. Another thing, uh, it doesn't meet the memory requirement because we do need to allocate a extra O N array just for the all the elements instead of O H, which is the height of the tree log N. How do we achieve the memory memory thing? So if you think about that way, it's kind of hard whenever we do the recursion, when we write the recursion function, it's kind of hard to cooperate this with whenever the caller calls next method. Because when I whenever I call next, what would you do? You're already in the middle of the recursion. It's kind of very hard to to uh, maintain that kind of state. So always remember, right? So you know, you can always write a tail recursion function using iterative method, but for this way, we also need to remember uh, what is the what is the current node and also what is the previous node so that you can do the in-order traversal. So just by using an extra stack will make this process very, very easy. So the way it works is, so I can actually switch here. The way it works is uh, the initial state is always you go to the, you go to your smallest element at first, so this is the initial state. Whenever you visit the node six, so this is your stack. You put a six into the stack, you put four, you put two. So now this is your starting point. So whenever you call next, what you need to do is you just need to pop this element, the top of the stack out, so two. And then you need to kind of check if this element has a right child or not. If it doesn't have a right child, just 
everything's fine. If you does have a, if it does have a right child, what you need to do is you just need to find the leftmost. Let's say this tree has a left child. So if I revert here, let's say here, it somehow has a, still has a left child beside five. And let's say right now, you know, we have two and then two is out of the stack. And then you keep popping, you pop four out. So now you need to check. So first of all, you output a four because now the next smallest element is actually four. Um, you pop it out. What you need to do is you push five into the stack. And then whatever along in the way, you should also pop uh, push all this element into the stack. So that let's say this is a uh, 4.8. I mean, it should be all integers, but this is a 4.1 just for the example's sake. So you have 4.8 here on the stack and also you have 4.1 on top of the stack as well. So this, this way, see, there's a kind of like a small while loop that you find the leftmost child. And then what you need to do is just the similar thing, right? Whenever you start popping, okay, you pop 4.1, does it have a right child? Nope. 4.8, nope. So these two things are out of the stack. And now you have five, does it have a right child now? Nope. So you have five. And now you're back to the stack. Does it have a right child? It does. So six is still basically get printed out here. And now you need to start pushing element into stack. You have 10, you have eight. Um, essentially translate into kind of this graph. See, you have 10 pushed in there, you have eight. So this is simply um, the idea of this method. Um, so in this case, let's look at the time complexity, right? So for, oh, and whenever you do has next method, all you need to do is check whether the stack is empty or not. If it is empty, that means there's no more element. So the has next is purely just O1. How about the next? Next, based on this, is amortized or average O order of one. Why is that? Well, it's kind of maybe it's a little bit hard to understand because, you know, whenever you have this kind of cases, it is actually not O1 because you do have to, uh, to have a for loop. Just go, you know, the worst case is it goes through the depths of the tree, which is OH. But on a high level, right, every node is still visited once and only once. So that kind of like gives you, okay, it's kind of like on average, everything is like ON and uh, there will be N steps. So ON divided by N is like O1. So it's like on average, everything is on average is O1 step because there are many cases it's O1, right? So amortize is O1. Um, that's for that part. And the memory, the stack is definitely uh, the space capacity is O h h is equals to log n which is the height of the tree okay uh i think that's everything i want to actually cover so for the code part is there any caveat that i want to oh the only caveat i think is uh just remember right so we don't need to check the stack size because it just what the java does is also like this right so if you if st stack is empty you also want to call next no such element exception. So the code is relatively straightforward. You have this private stack, you initialize it, you basically keep moving to the left, which is going to uh, this state. Your pointer actually, the top of stack right now points to the left most the child in the, in the tree. Has next, just check whether the stack is empty. Next, always pop it up. If it doesn't have a right, just directly return. If it has a right, push the stack and then do a for uh, while loop, find the leftmost child and also pushing all the elements along the way. Um, okay, yeah, that's all I want to cover about this problem. It's a relatively easy problem. So um, leave any comments if you have any questions. Thanks a lot for watching. See you guys next time.